Knowing how to design parts for CNC machining can save you a lot of time and money. However, a challenge that frequently comes up when designing parts for CNC machining is that no industry-wide standard exists. But not to worry, there are recommended design rules and feasible values for the most common features encountered in CNC machine parts. Hi, my name is Nico and welcome back to another episode in our series, What is CNC Machining? In this video, you'll learn how to design parts optimized for CNC machining, from design restrictions to actionable design rules. Let's go! In order to know how to properly design parts for CNC machining, it's important we have a clear understanding of the different design restrictions in CNC machining. These restrictions are a natural result of the mechanics of the cutting process, and in particular, tool geometry, tool axis, workpiece stiffness, tool stiffness, and work holding. Let's look at those a little closer and start with tool geometry. Most CNC machining cutting tools have a cylindrical shape with a flat or spherical end, restricting the part geometries that can be produced. Let's imagine you want the internal corners of your CNC part to have sharp corners. You simply can't manufacture that. The internal vertical corners of a CNC part will always have a radius, no matter how small of a cutting tool is used. Next, tool axis. Surfaces that can't be reached by a cutting tool cannot be CNC machined. This prohibits, for example, the fabrication of parts with internal hidden geometries and puts a limit to the maximum depth of an undercut. Workpiece stiffness. Because things can get pretty hot during CNC machining and cutting forces are very strong, the workpiece can actually vibrate or deform. This limits, for example, the minimum wall thickness that a CNC machine part can have and the maximum aspect ratio of tall features. Then we have tool stiffness. Like the workpiece, the cutting tool can deform or vibrate during machining. Because of this, you might end up having looser tolerances and tools breaking during the manufacturing process. This is more prominent when the ratio of length to diameter of the cutting tool increases. It's the reason why deep cavities cannot be easily CNC machined. Finally, work holding. The geometry of a part determines the way it will be held on the CNC machine and the number of setups required. This has an impact on the cost, but also on the accuracy of the part. For example, when manually repositioning a work holding, this might introduce a small but not negligible positional error. This is a key benefit of five axis versus three axis CNC machining. All right, we discussed the design restrictions for CNC machining, but now it's time to translate those restrictions into actionable design rules. Let's start with cavity depths. Cavity depths should not exceed three to four times their diameter. 10 times the tool diameter or 25 centimeters is advisable. Tool deflection, chip evacuation, and vibrations become more prominent when cavities have a smaller depth to width ratio. Limiting the depth of the cavity to four times its width ensures good results. Moving on to internal edges. For the vertical corner radius, we recommend one third of the cavity depth or larger. The larger the fillet, the better. Using the recommended value for the internal corner radii ensures that the correct diameter tool can be used. Increasing the corner radii slightly above the recommended value, for example by one millimeter, allows the tool to cut following a circular path instead of a 90 degree angle. This is preferred as it results in a higher quality surface finish. If sharp 90 degree internal corners are required, consider adding a T-bone undercut instead of reducing the corner radius. More undercuts later. Edges on the floor of a cavity should be either sharp or have a 0.1 mm or 1 mm radius. Next, thin walls. When it comes to thin walls, we typically recommend 0.8 mm for metals and 1.5 mm for plastics. However, you should evaluate this on a case-by-case -case basis. Reducing the wall thickness of the part will reduce the stiffness of the material. This will result in increased vibrations during the machining process and less accurate parts. Especially, 
plastics are prone to warping due to residual stresses and softening due to temperature increases. Therefore, a larger minimum wall thickness is advisable. For the diameter of holes, we recommend using standard drill bit sizes. You can find those in our CNC machining guide. The link is actually in the description below. Holes with standard diameter are preferred as they can be machined with a standard drill bit. The maximum depth of holes we recommend is four times the nominal diameter. 10 times the nominal diameter is typical and 40 times the nominal diameter is feasible. Holes with non-standard diameter must be machined with an end mill tool. In this case, the maximum cavity depth restrictions should apply and the recommended maximum depth value should be used. Holes deeper than the typical value are machined using specialized drill bits with a minimum 3 mm diameter. Blind holes machined with a drill have a conical floor, 135 degree angle, while holes machined with an end mill tool will be flat. Next up, threads. For thread sizes, we recommend M6 or larger. The minimum size is M2. Choose the largest thread possible as they are easier to machine. For thread length, we recommend three times the nominal diameter. The minimum is 1.5 times the nominal diameter. The majority of the load applied to the thread is taken by the first few teeth. Threads three times longer than the nominal diameter are therefore unnecessary. Always design threads as cosmetic in your CAD package and include a technical drawing to your order. Tall features. We recommend a maximum height to width ratio of four. Tall features are difficult to machine accurately because they are prone to vibrations. Consider the overall geometry of the parts. Rotating it 90 degrees during the machining process will result in a different aspect ratio. When it comes to small features, tolerances, and maximum part size, this is where it gets a little bit subjective. For small features, we argue to use 2.5 millimeters. Features of 0.5 millimeters are feasible. Anything below this is considered micro-machining and must be avoided unless necessary. We suggest the tolerance for machining parts to be plus or minus 0.125 millimeters. Tolerances, unilateral, bilateral, interference, and geometric should be defined on all critical features, but you should never over-tolerance. If no tolerance is specified in the technical drawing, then the standard plus or minus 0.125 millimeters will be used. Finally, let's talk about maximum part size. In CNC milling, we recommend the maximum part size to be 400 millimeters by 250 by 150 millimeters. In CNC turning, we advise the maximum part size to be a 500 millimeter diameter by 1000 millimeters. Very large CNC machines can produce parts with dimensions of up to 2000 millimeters by 800 millimeters by 1000 millimeters. Five axis CNC machining systems typically have a smaller build volume. Last but not least, we should be talking about designing for undercuts. Undercuts are features that cannot be machined with standard cutting tools. It doesn't matter how the part is rotated, the cutting tools still cannot reach all surfaces. Therefore, you need special cutting tools, T-shaped, V-shaped, or lollipop-shaped tools. How do you design undercuts? We recommend undercut width dimensions to be 3 mm or about 1 eighth of an inch to 40 mm, about 1 and a half inches. For the maximum depth, we suggest not to go over two times their width. It's wise to design undercuts with width of whole millimeter increments or standard inch fraction. If you don't use standard dimensions, then custom cutting tools need to be created. Then we have undercut clearance. We recommend a minimum clearance of four times the depth of an undercut. For undercuts on internal faces, add enough clearance between the opposing walls to ensure tool access. So there you have it. Those are our tips on designing for CNC machining. I hope everything was clear and that you learned something new today. Any questions? Please put them in the comments below and we'll be happy to get back to you. Also, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future episodes in our series. I hope you had a really great time and see you guys next time.